Bmart is the 19th largest company in India. In fact, a soon to be Nifty 50 company. If you look into its profit and loss statement, you can see that in the last year, Bmart made nearly 1,500 crore rupees profit. But if you actually observe more carefully, you can see that last year, Bmart actually lost nearly 100 crore rupees. It's self contradicting, right? And such intricate details regarding the cash, actual cash of a company is what we can find in the cash flow statement of a company. And that's exactly what we are going to learn in today's video. So hey all, welcome to the 17th video of the complete learning series of stock market investing and trading. As always, I put all these videos into a series. The series is available in the playlist given in the i button up above. Make sure you watch all the videos in the right order and learn really well. Let's all invest together and grow together. So yeah, the agenda of the video is super clear. We are going to learn all that is there regarding the cash flow statement of a company, the third important financial statement of a company. I hope you've watched the previous video. We've already learned how to analyze the annual report of a company, profit and loss statement of a company, and also the balance sheet of a company. The third important financial statement is the cash flow statement. And that is exactly what we are going to learn in today's video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The name is Charlie Shuzin. Welcome to Market Feed. Okay, go down into the comment section, mark your attendance, let's get started. Let's learn about cash flow statement. Now, speaking about cash flow statement, this is a very, very important financial statement because the profit and loss statement talks about a lot of things. Balance sheet talks about a lot of other things as well. But even before getting into analyzing a PL statement or a balance sheet statement, if you actually take the cash flow statement in the beginning and analyze a few things there, then it can act as a litmus test. Only if the litmus test of the cash flow statement says that, okay, this company is good enough to be investigated, good enough to be studied, then only you need to study PL statement and balance sheet. So it makes sense that cash flow statement is super important, right? So yeah, let's get started. So just like the last video, before getting into the presentation here, let's talk a bit face to face and learn some very simple basic things and even by using an example let's get the basics sorted then let's get into the presentation the first thing we are doing is understanding what cash flow statement does in very simple terms okay so i'll tell this cash flow statement tells about the current cash position of the company the current position of the cash in the company so cash flow statement is one uh, piece of paper and it will talk about the net cash inflow of the company net cash outflow of the company and thus it will show you the net cash flow of the company okay so number one thing the cash flow statement will tell you is the net cash flow of the company and the second thing it will tell you is the net cash balance of the company cool wrap your heads around it a bit now if you even actually look at the literal word right cash flow statement it's kind of easy it's not as complicated as a balance sheet it is the cash flow statement so it should basically tell about how cash is flowing through the company right so the net cash inflow and the net cash outflow and the difference will give you the net cash flow of the company now, if you are someone who's actually listening to this uh, with a lot of attention, then you can come back to me with a very interesting question. Sharik, we in the last video, when we learned in the PL statement, we can actually see that what is the revenue of the company. So, isn't revenue of the company is equal to the cash inflow of the company? Just like that, you can ask me, hey, Sharik. In the profit and loss statement, there is a section which says the expenses of the company. Isn't expenses of the company is equal to cash outflow of the company? No. And that's exactly why cash flow statement is super important. Now you think about it. Revenue of a company will tell all income of the company. That's true. But all of those income might not be realized as cash in that year. Do you understand? Maybe revenue of a company is some 100 crore rupees. But... In that 100 crores revenue, there might be trade receivables of 50 crore rupees. That is the 
person to whom we sold, that person might have said, okay, we might, we will pay after six months only. So that is trade receivables. So that is 50 crore rupees. So revenue will tell 100 crore rupees and expense might be only 20 crore rupees and PNL statement might say 80 crore rupees profit. But in that 100 crore rupees revenue, 50 crores is receivables. It would come only as cash. It will be realized as cash only later. So in the PNL statement, revenue would say 100 crore uh, rupees, but the cash flow statement, net cash inflow would only say 50 crore rupees because 100 crores revenue and 50 crores is receivables. Remaining was only 50 crores, which actually came in as cash. You understand the difference? Just like that, uh, you look into the expenses segment uh, in the profit and loss statement and the expenses would say maybe 50 crores again. But in that 50 crore rupees, there might be a trade payable segment of 10 crore rupees. That is actually cash has not gone out of the company. That is a payable. You have agreed that you might pay in the next six months. So cash has not gone out. So expenses might say 50 crores with trade payables of 10 crores. So the net cash outflow would be no 50 crores, but 40 crores only because the 10 crores has not gone out, right? So I hope you understand what is the difference be between actual cash position in the cash flow statement and what is shown in the PL statement. Both are completely different. There is a very famous saying out there, right? Cash is king. To any business is true, cash is king and that is what a cash flow statement talks about. So I hope so far you have a basic understanding of what cash flow statement is and why it is important. Why is it important? Because it actually talks about the position of a cash in the company. Cash is what is important. p &L statement can talk about money which can probably come in later, money which has to be paid later. All of those is not important to actually running a business, right? What is important is cash and cash flow st statement actually shows you the position of a company in terms of pure liquid cash cool now let's actually before moving ahead into the presentation let me take a very simple example so that we can actually understand uh, what the cash flow statement is right so for that let me come into this sheet here cool we are again taking the example of our own our favorite jignesh bai supermarket i hope you all haven't forgotten about jignesh bai again for all of you who have not seen my what the stock market video i'm giving the link here there we have taken jignesh bai supermarket and beautifully in very simple terms explain what the stock market does anyways i'm coming here so we are looking into jignesh bai supermarket here so i'm just this is a very simple typical example i've just made in uh, one minute uh, just to explain you what a basic simple cash flow statement is right uh, so if you see here Jignesh by supermarket has multiple activities going around number one is sales so by doing sales his supermarket has a cash inflow of 30 lakhs in a year just an example okay uh, then there is sublease income that is he has multiple supermarkets so in one of the supermarkets some part he actually gave to uh, I don't know some food joint to run their uh, restaurant there so there he is getting five lakh rupees of sublease income rent he is getting uh, so that is an inflow right so 5 lakh rupees inflow is happening then he is paying salary to all of his workforce so there he is paying 10 lakh rupees so that is a cash outflow and since, since it is going out it is negative 10 then rent he has to pay for all his outlets so that is negative 5 5 lakh rupees is flowing out it's a cash outflow right uh, just like that to sell items in a supermarket he has to Purchase inventory, right? So there he is spending 10 lakhs. Dividend he is paying at the end of the year. He is paying dividend to himself and the other shareholders. So that is another 5 lakh. So if you sum the cash inflows, then you get the net cash inflow of the company. So that is 35 lakh rupees. And the net cash outflow of the company is the sum of all the cash out, uh, outflows. And that is 30 lakh rupees. And the net cash flow of the company is 35, which is the net cash inflow plus net cash outflow, which is 5 lakh rupees. So you can say that after one year of operations, Jignesh Bai is left with actually 5 lakh rupees in the company's bank account. Okay. Now this is not exactly right. This is after that year. Maybe in the previous year, he might have had maybe 10 lakh rupees in the bank account. So that 10 lakh rupees plus this year's 5 lakh rupees generated, totally 15 lakh rupees in liquid cash he should be having. That is the relevance and the importance of the cash flow statement.
Cool? Now, if this example is also understood, let's quickly get into our presentation, right? So, yeah, cash flow statement analysis is what we are analyzing or what we are learning today. So, now let me quickly uh, revise some basic things that we already learned in my simple style. So, uh, going through the presentation, right? What is cash flow statement? The simple answer to that is cash flow statement is a financial statement which shows inflow and outflow of cash for a company over a specific accounting period. Normally, when we look into annual reports, we see for one year. So for one year, we see the inflow and outflow of cash in a company, specifically cash, cash is king, right? So that is what is seen here. So number one is, uh, what is cash inflow? It is generation of cash. What is cash outflow? It is usage of cash or spending. Very simple, we understand. We already looked at the example also, right? And finally, the cash flow statement shows what? Cash flow, cash inflow, cash outflow and it shows net cash flow as well which is cash inflow minus cash outflow very simple we have already understood so we are moving ahead so why cash flow statement now we you have a clear answer to this the larger answer is only cash flow statement talks about the cash position of a company PL statement might tell okay the company has generated that's exactly what i said in the introduction right we'll actually go into dmart statements and i'll show this DMART's profit and loss statement says that it has made 1,500 crore rupees profit. But when you actually observe into the cash flow statement, you can see that the company has gone down by nearly 100 crore rupees in cash last year. Even though after generating 1,500 crore rupees profit, 100 crores cash negative is where the company went. So that is exactly why cash flow statement is important. But there are other reasons as well, like we can read them. Provides a detailed picture of what happened to a business's cash during an account period, accounting period. So it shows exactly where the cash is moving within the company. So that is super important. Number two is allows investors to understand how companies operations is making money and how it is being spent. Super important. Number three is shows how well a company is managing its cash position and generates cash to pay off debt obligations and fund operations. So it's all about how money or cash is being utilized by the management by the company in the most efficient manner, right? Now let's move ahead and get into the crux of the matter. Cool? Because in the last two videos, we follow the same procedure only. We first understood what is the structure of the financial statement that we are learning. Then we actually went into the financial statement, verified that the structure that we learned and the structure that we see in the financial statement are the same. And then we went ahead with understanding, right? So let's understand the structure of a cash flow statement. So cash flow statement talks about mainly three things and after speaking about these three things, it will tell you the net cash flow of the company. Cool. And it also talks about the cash balance of the company. So yeah, three things that we are going to learn. You're seeing on the screen right now. These three things. Then it talks about the net cash flow of a company. And finally, the cash flow statement talks about the cash balance of a company. So these five things you can see in the cash flow statement of a company. First, let's understand the first three things that you're seeing on the screen right now. So cash flow is categorized into these three at the top, right? First one is operational activities which is cash flow from operational activities then it talks about cash flow from investing activities then it talks about cash flow from financing activities right cash flow from different activities of a company uh, is shown in the cash flow statement then the sum of these three is actually the net cash flow of the company and finally we have cash balance of the company Cool. Let's go into the cash flow statement of uh, DMART as we've been doing and we can verify it. Let's verify. No. First, we can see what cash flow from operational activities, operating activities. See how much is that? It is net cash flow from operating activities is coming to 1,372 crores. Cool. Then we can see cash flow from uh, investing activities. How much is that coming up to? It is a negative minus 1,289 crores. Then we can see Cash flow from financing activities. How much is that? That is uh, negative 179 crores. So we have got what? We have gotten cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, cash flow from financing activities. Then we can see net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalent. This is the net cash flow. And what is that? That is the sum of the above three. So sum of uh, what is the one? 1,372 minus 1289 minus 179 because both of them are 
uh, in minus right and that is minus 96 crores that is the net cash flow of dmart in the last year is 90 negative 96 crores compared to the previous year whatever cash they had it has gone down by 96 crores even though it generated profits of 1500 crores anyway so that is net cash flow for you number four and finally balance balance amount that they have in their uh, bank account right ba their cash balance is 95 crores positive now why is it positive we'll uh, talk about that in some time but now i hope you have the structure of the cash flow statement in mind right what is the structure cash flow from operational activities then we have cash flow from investing activities then we have cash flow from financing activities some of this is the net cash flow of the company and finally we have the cash balance of the company cool this is the structure. You clearly have the structure in the mind. Now let's go one by one, line by line and understand what each of them talks about. Number one is cash flow from operational activities. Now what is it? Very simple. Whatever cash flow is generated in the, in the company from the activities which are regarding the primary activities of the company, those are called operational activities. See, activities related to the daily core business operations of a company includes sales, marketing, manufacturing, technology upgrade, resource hiring and others. For example, if you look into Jignesh by supermarket, what is an operational activity? Whatever sales he is doing uh, in a supermarket is an operational activity. It's a, if money is generated there, it can be a cash inflow there, right? So what is very interesting here is each of these cash flow from each of these activities can either be positive or be negative. Right. So let's talk about operational activities here. Say Jignesh Bhai actually made sales worth 10 lakh rupees in his supermarkets. So 10 lakh rupees came to him, came into the company, right? So that is the positive cash flow from operational activity. Just like that, say Jignesh Bhai actually spent another 3 lakh rupees in marketing and advertising his uh, supermarkets. Then 3 lakh rupees moved out of the company. Right. So that is a negative cash flow. That is a cash outflow. That, so that would be negative in nature. Right. And that is a cash flow from operational activity. I hope you're understanding this. Then let's move into investing activities. Activities of investments that a company makes for gaining benefits at a later stage. It includes parking money in an interest bearing instrument, investing in equity shares, buying land or property plants and equipments. Let's take an example here also, right? So Jignesh Bhai, when he was observing his supermarket, he understood that his bakery is actually doing good. He has a bakery inside a supermarket. So he thought if he actually starts manufacturing all of those snacks sold in the bakery, then his profit margin can increase. So then he invested nearly 10 lakh rupees in a year to buy plant equipments and machinery to manufacture these chips or the snacks that he can sell in his bakery, right? So in he invested 10 lakh rupees to buy plant and machinery and equipment. So that 10 lakh rupees is an investment activity. And is it positive or negative? You tell me. Cash went outside of the company to buy, right? So that is a cash outflow. So it is a negative. When you write it in the cash flow statement, it will be shown as negative minus 10 lakh rupees because 10 lakh rupees went outside of the company. Just like that, an example of a cash inflow from an investing activity would be maybe Jigresh Bhai actually invested into some great stocks years before. This year, I actually sold the stocks, booked profits. That money came into the company, came into the company. That is the cash inflow from an investing activity will be shown as a positive uh, cash flow in the cash flow statement. Cool. And finally, we can talk about cash flow from financing activities. See, this mostly involves activities about financial transactions of the company, such as distributing dividends, paying interest to loans, raising fresh debt, etc. Again, we'll take examples so that we can easily understand here. Normally, when we talk about financing activities, the largest thing you have to uh, think about is loans, either loan taken or loan repaid or you can even think about dividends being distributed back to shareholders for example a negative cash flow from financing activity example would be say Jigresh Bhai generated good amount of profits in a year he decided to give dividends in the tunes of 10 lakh rupees okay 10 lakh rupees dividend he is paying out so money is going out of the company cash outflow so that would be minus 10 lakh rupees in the cash flow statement and that would be cash outflow from a financing activity. An example for a positive cash flow from a financing activity would be in a year, say, uh, Jignesh Bhai decided to 
raise loans or take loan of nearly 20 lakh rupees for maybe starting a new outlet right so he's taking 20 lakh rupees bank loan from a bank so 20 lakh rupees is coming into the company cash inflow so that would be positive 20 lakh in the cash flow statement under financing activity cash flow from financing activities i hope this is clear so under three heads you can clearly see in the cash flow statement how cash is moving either out if it is moving out, then it would be shown as a negative entry in the cash flow statement. If it is moving in, it is a cash inflow and it would be show, shown as a positive entry in the cash flow statement. Now, again, move, before moving ahead, let me tell you one thing. It's more of a thumb rule kind of a thing. Speaking about operational activities here, the net cash flow from the operational activities is always preferred to be positive, right? Because the company's sole core business purpose is to make or make cash flow into the company. So from operational activities, when you add up all the cash flow from the operational activities, the net cash flow should ideally be positive only. Cool? Number one. Thumb rule number one. Thumb rule number two is uh, net cash flow from investing activities can be negative. It is fine. Why? Because if it is negative, it means that the company is spending more and more. It is spending or pushing cash out of the company to invest into more stuff it might be investing into more plant and machinery and equipment or buying more assets for the company which can help the company grow further so it's okay for cash flow from investing activities to be negative just that you have to see a uh, money is spent wisely cool and finally financing activity so also the net cash flow it's okay for the money to be negative in fact it is good if it is negative why if cash flow, net cash flow from financing activities is negative, it means that probably the company is repaying its loans or the company is paying back money to its shareholders as dividends. That's why money is moving out. What if uh, financing activities cash flow is positive? It means that the company is again taking a lot of lot of lots of loans, right? Is that good? Not really good, right? So yeah, so again, as a thumb rule, I'll say operational activities, net cash flow can be positive or should be positive. Investing activities, net cash flow can be negative, it is fine. And financing activities, net cash flow can also be negative, it is fine. Cool. If so much is understood, let's actually get into the uh, cash flow of cash flow statement of DMART and understand a bit more. So if you see here, the first thing shown here is cash flow from operating activities. And uh, I mean, if you want, you can read all this, but we can quickly jump down and see that net cash flow from operating activities is 1,372 gross. Then we have cash flow from investing activities, multiple things here. And finally, net cash flow in investing activities is negative 1,289 crores, which is fine, right? Why is it negative? Let's see, no. See, purchase of property, plant and equipment, intangible asset, investment properties is negative 2,410 crore rupees, which means that DMART has spent 2,410 crore rupees last year in actual cash to purchase what? Plant, property, equipment, uh, intangible assets as well. They're spending a lot of money in investing back into the company, which can be fine as well, right? Anyways, net cash flow used in investing activities is 1,289 crores. Then we have cash flow from financing activities, right? So that is, see, interest paid on lease liability, money flowing out, see, negative 52 crores. Payment of principal portion of lease liability, money flowing out. Uh, repayment of short-term borrowing, Right, I mean, they've taken a short-term loan and they've paid back 250 crores there, which is fine. So finally, cash net cash flow used in financial activities is negative 179 crores. Good, you can clearly analyze and understand how cash is flowing through the company across these three activities, operational, finance, and investing activities, right? And finally, we have the sum of these three as net cash flow of the company, net increase or decrease in cash in, cash equivalent. And it turns out to be 96 crores negative. That is, after the last one year of whole operations of DMART, 96 crore rupees went out of the company. Even though in the p &L statement, it shows that it generated 1,500 crore rupees profit. Then we can actually look into the cash flow statement and understand why the 1,500 crore rupees profit actually translated into 96 crore rupees uh, cash flowing out of the company. We can easily see here. See, if you look into cash flow from operating activities, we can see that profit before taxes, 2,064 crores. Cool. Then they have uh, removed all of those uh, things which are adding on to the 2,064 crores, but which are not part of the operating activities activities then they uh, come up with 2550 crores then they are reducing all the other stuff which are not actually contributing to cash 
For example, you see here, no, trade payables, 11 crores is there. So that cash has not gone out of the company. So that is still in the company. So that 11 crores, they are adding on to the uh, profit before tax. And another simple example here would be, see, trade receivables, 23 crores. So that they are reducing because this money has not come in. This cash has not come in. So finally, after doing uh, everything here, uh, net cash flow from operating activities, 1,372 crores. So that is the cash actually which came in as cash, 1,372 crores only. See, the catch is here. Last year, they spent 2,410 crore rupees as cash investing back into the company to buy plants, machinery and equipment. Because so much money went out there, they have gone net cash flow negative. And this net cash flow negative good? I wouldn't say it's good for a company. It's always good for the net cash flow to be positive. So DMART looked great in a lot of terms. But when you actually look in the cash flow statement, you can actually find that there are net cash flow negative company, which isn't that great. Cool. But again, you can also justify the fact that they have gone into net cash flow negative only because they invested 2,410 crore rupees into uh, their future only. So that can uh, bear fruits in the future maybe. Maybe that's good also. So that's where deeper analysis is required. Now coming down, what is the final thing that we have to see in the cash flow statement? Cash balance with the company, right? So here we can see uh, this year they have lost 96 crore rupees. See, what is the next line item here? Cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the year. See, this year from all of their activities, they have lost 96 crore rupees in cash. But at the beginning of the year, they had 191 crore rupees, 50 lakh rupees as cash or cash equivalent with them. Now, where did this come from? This came from the last year. So you can see last year for the year ended 31st March 2021, they are ending with a balance cash of 191 uh, crore 50 lakh rupees. So that is carry forward into the new year. So the new year, when they started, they have 191 crore 50 lakh. The year they operated, they lost 96 crore rupees uh, in cash. So finally, they are left with 95 crore 12 lakh rupees. So this is the actual cash balance. So when we started learning, what did I say? In a cash flow statement, we'll be seeing cash flow happening in the company via different activities. Three activities we saw, right? Uh, operating activity, investing activity, financing activity. The sum of this is the net cash flow of the company. In terms of um, DMART, it is negative and net cash flow. And finally, we can see the cash balance. And we actually see the cash balance of the company, which is 95 crore rupees. Super clear. So this is exactly why cash flow statement is important. It talks about the cash movement in the company and cash is king. Right. No, I know there is a lot of data here. And in the beginning, I actually said that the cash flow statement can actually be used as a litmus test. Let's look into the litmus test. Just the last thing to be done in the video. Because a lot more analysis is coming in the following videos. We're going to learn about financial ratios. We'll actually learn how to take data from these financial statements and make sense out of them. We'll learn. No worries. But before that, in today's video, let's actually learn how a cash flow statement can act as a litmus test which can tell us, okay, if the company is prima facie good or not. Cool. So let's look into DMART here. So what I've done is I've taken uh, cash flow statement data or numbers of the last nearly 10 years of DMART of Trend Limited. I hope you know Trend Limited. It is Tata's, right? It is Tata's retail company. I would say all of your West side and Zudio, all of the Chroma, all of those come under Trend Limited. Okay. And I've also taken Tata Consultancy Services, TCS. So I've taken these three companies. I've taken their last 10 years cash flow statement, important data. What are the important data? You can see here cash from operating activity, cash flow from investing activity, cash flow from uh, financing activity and net cash flow. All these important data I've taken and I've put it into an Excel sheet and we can easily do a quick analysis here. So if you look into Avenue Supermarts, which is DMART, cash flow from operating activity, it is positive every year, which is good. Positive every year is good. And it is also growing every year. 127, 198, 222, 433. It's kind of growing uh, every year. 806, it's growing only. Amazing. This year it took a hit, but probably we can attribute that to Corona, right? So yeah, it's growing. It's very good. Number one, it's good. I have summed it up. All 10 years, I am summing it up. 7,000 crore rupees cash actually came in, which is amazing. Then let's look into cash from investing activity. So every year it is negative. Right. Uh, this year it's not negative, March uh, uh, 2018, but every other year it is negative. And what does negative says? They are reinvesting into the company 
for buying plant, machinery, equipment, buying more and more land. One important uh, data about uh, DMART, if you did not know, I maybe I thought you will uh, study it yourself, but now I feel that I should be telling it. Nearly 80% of DMART stores, they stand on their own land. DMART buys land of their own and then construct a uh, supermarket. So maybe that's why their uh, cash from investing activity is so high. They're spending so much, right? Uh, and if you look into cash from financing activity, so some years it was positive, till here it's positive. In fact, many years it's positive. So positive means that cash is flowing in, which means that DMART is probably taking loan, right? They're taking loan uh, for maybe buying the land for their operational activities, which can be fine as well. And if you look into net cash flow, it is not actually telling a great story. It's not like every year it is uh, super positive. As you can see here, many years they have negative cash flows as well. Negative net cash flow. This year, in fact, is the largest negative cash flow for them. So negative cash flow, again, indicates that cash is flowing out of the company, which isn't that great, right? But again, overall, everything, if you put together uh, cash from operating activities so far, they've made 7,000 crore rupees in cash. They've invested 11,640 crores rupees in cash and uh, from financing activity, in fact, 4,687 crores actually came into the company and this can again be launched, right? Uh, again, this is a larger picture of Avenue Supermarts. Again, so just by looking into this, the lit litmus test is, this kind of looks like, okay, there is something more to be studied in the company. Okay, it makes sense that I jump deeper into the company and read and learn more about the company. Makes sense? Cool. Now I'm coming to, down to trend limited. Trend, if you see, uh, cash uh, from operating activity, it is positive. Not every year. Some years it's not positive, but again, it's mostly positive. And it is not growing that much. See, here itself, it's stagnating. It, there isn't much of a growth. Uh, here it actually grew, but then this year it came down drastically. Uh, if you look into cash from investing activity, uh, see, in the last two years, they haven't been investing much as well, which uh, raises some uh, questions there. And if you look into cash from financing activity, uh, here, uh, later years, it's been negative. Maybe they're paying back loans, they're paying dividend, which can be great. Uh, but if you look into net cash flow also, it's hugely negative in this year, but it's not hugely positive in others, uh, other years as well. And net cash flow from the last 10 years of operations is negative. That is 10 years they have been operational and uh, over the 10 years, they have paid out 192 crore rupees in cash. So this is an example, maybe if the cash flow statement is acting as a litmus test for you. So after seeing this, maybe you can choose not to study more about Trend Limited. What do you think? I mean, just a, a simple test that you can do, right? Now, another example here is TCS. TCS, if you see, amazing, I'm not going into the examples or, or the intricacies here. Cash from operating activity over the years, it has generated 2,54,847, right? Uh, investing activity, they've invested 34,000 crores. Cash from financing activity is, they've paid out 2,10,000 crores. Now, my understanding as a larger understanding is they have paid out a lot as dividends only. Right. Uh, so that is great. And finally, if you look at the net cash flow over the last 10 years, I'm summing it up, is 10,494 crores. So that much cash is positive uh, with the company, which is uh, itself good, right? Anyway, so these act as a litmus test. You can definitely uh, jump into the uh, other financial statements, read and learn and understand more about more intricacies and details and understand more about a company. Now, one more last thing I'll talk about before ending into the video is the important concept of free cash. Cash flow. So far, we understood net cash flow and cash balance. Those are things that we'll get from cash flow statement and th those are important things. But one another thing which can derive from uh, the cash flow statement of a company is free cash flow of a company. And you look at here, this point, Warren Buffett calls free cash flow as owner's income and popularized it for stock analysis. Now, free cash flow is a term which was popularized by Warren Buffett and he thinks that every analyst who we are, we are trying to be, right? We should be looking at the free cash flow of a company as well. And what is free cash flow? Free cash flow is equal to cash from operating activities minus capital expenditure. Now, what does free cash flow signifies? It shows the excess operating cash a company generates after accounting for capital expenditure such as buying land, building and equipment. It is a cash flow available for the company to repay creditors or pay dividends and interest to investors. So here, if you observe what Warren Buffett is saying us, 
the most focus should be given to cash flow from operating activities and then you remove all the capital expenditure from there and then there might be positive cash flow from your financing activities investing activities but those are not your operational activities so he is purely focusing on the operational core business power of the company that we are focusing on so in that example if we take dmart what can we see the free cash flow of dmart is cash cash from operating activities so the net cash flow from operating activities is 1372 crores right so that's exactly what we have put here free cash flow of dmart is equal to 1372 crores minus capital expenditures now capital expenditures is something that we can find out from the cash flow statement itself right you can come down and you can see see cash used for uh, buying uh, or capex right purchase of property land uh, plant equipment everything is 2410 crore rupees 42 lakhs so that i am reducing and here i am getting the free cash flow of dmart which is even worse from net cash flow here it is negative 1038 crores so free cash flow is a negative or cash outflow of 1038 crores why was the net cash flow better it was only 96 crores because there there are contribution from uh, other uh, cash flow from other activities like investing and financing as, as well but warren buffett says free cash flow is what is even more important now i'll give this as an assignment for you maybe you can look into multiple companies pull out their data and put them into an excel sheet and find out their net cash flow and their free cash flow and then analyze if those companies are good enough for deeper in-depth analysis cool so anyways that's it from my side for this video uh we have come to an end of understanding a lot of documents of a company right annual report pl statement cash flow statement balance sheet now it is time to take data from these statements and then uh, build important metrics and ratios with which you can make sense of a company. Cool? With which you can measure a company, with, with which you can understand if a company is doing well or bad. So that is exactly what we will be doing in the coming video. So yeah, as always, if you like the video, make sure that smash the like button, get into the comment section, ask doubts. That's very important, right? I'll make sure that we are answering to your doubts. Share the video with a lot of people, invite them into our learning, growing community, right? So yeah, that is it from my side for today. Let's learn, invest, trade and grow together. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.